Today we're going to work with the with JavaScript and the HTML DOM, which is the document object model. And it breaks each HTML document into a tree of objects with different elements, attributes, and they can have content like text, attribute that can define them like an href, and there's all sorts of things that you can change for the HTML. You can change the HTML, you can change the CSS, you can change the you can remove elements, you can add new elements. We're going to work with one simple sample of this. You'll want to read through the entire section on the JavaScript HTML DOM at the w3schools.com. I'm going to cover it lightly, but I'm not going to go into every single page. We've already been working with the DOM when we use the document.getElementById and add inner HTML. There are different elements that we can, or different ways of finding elements. We can get element by ID, by tag name, and by class name. We can change HTML elements, their HTML content, the attributes. We can also set the attribute, and we can change styles. We can add and delete elements, and we can add an event handler. So far, we've been doing this from the HTML page. We've been calling a function, but we can add it inside of the JavaScript page, and we'll do that today. These are some of the HTML objects that you can find. The domain, forms, head, images, there's all sorts of things that we can find from the CSS. We can also work with HTML elements by ID, tag name, class name, CSS selector, and through HTML object collections like form elements. And you can see samples on how to use each of these. We can change your HTML. We've done this from the beginning. We've been working with inner HTML underwriting. We can change the CSS either by swapping the classes or actually changing the styles directly. You can do DOM animations. I won't really get into that here. You can work with DOM events. We've already been doing mouse overs when we were working with images. You can add event listeners. We will do this today. You can work with the navigation on how to get through the DOM nodes. Node relationships are important because we can work with parents, child, siblings, next. The HTML is the root node. It has no parents. Head is the first child. Body is the, first, is the last child. So you should read through this and it takes a little practice to get used to working through child nodes. So we'll do it a little bit with that today. The nodes in the node list take some study to understand. I'm going to show you a we're going to work with this. I'm going to show you an example of a working project that includes a lot, but not all, of the document object model. So I've created a page talking about one of the new degrees I'm working on. This is one I'm we're offering at MCC. And I have it so that you can expand or subtract each of these elements. And it takes a combination of HTML, JavaScript, and CSS to get all of these effects. The recommended reference book for this class is Murox JavaScript and jQuery, and the DOM chapter is an excellent reference on understanding this. So let's take a look at the different pieces of code. I'm actually just going to go ahead and flip over to brackets here, and you'll see that I have three pages that are working together for this. I have the HTML page, I have my style page, and I have my DOM script. I'm going to walk through them in that order. So we have our standard head settings here with our title. I'm setting this up to be responsive. I don't know how responsive it would need to be, but it would work pretty well on a mobile device.
and you can see that we can see what it would look like on many different devices. And this is actually one of my favorite navigation techniques. If you have a long page, having the expanding panels, I find very effective. One of the things I should do here is remove some of the padding on the phone sizes. I didn't do any media queries on this. I wasn't really worried about it. But you can see it's pretty responsive and would work well in this environment. I'm using the W3 Schools, W3 CSS framework. I'm using Google icons from the material icons. That's my plus and minus signs. And I did a little styling to make them purple and larger. I really like using the icons. It makes it easy to work with in JavaScript. And then I have my own style sheet where I override some of the styles. In the body section, I have a class for my H1 section where I'm putting it in a container, and then I have a separate container for all of the content. I have an H2 with the class open, and open is tied to this plus sign. We will be able to change that from open and close. We have a class here, which is close, which we will switch to open. And I, notice I've also added an ID. My ID for this section or for this class is one. And then I set the material icons ID to I1. This will allow me to change the HTML from add to remove so I can change the material designs icon. And this is how you bring in a material icon. And that's how we set up the heading. Then when you expand it, you'll see, and you can click anywhere in here because the whole H2 row is active, not just that minus sign. And when it expands, we have several paragraphs. So each of these elements here will expand. And they can and multiple ones can be expanded at one time. Sometimes you'll write JavaScript where only one thing can be expanded at a time. But I didn't want to do this one that way. So you can see each of these will have a class and an ID for both the, he the H2 header and for the div that follows it. And it's important to know that we're going to be working with whatever node is directly following the one that we select. That becomes important in the JavaScript. Let's take a look at some of the key styles. I grabbed the colors. I grabbed a whole color theme the purple color theme from the W3 schools. I have an additional constrain class that limits the width of the containers, rounds the corners, and sets the background to white. The, I've set the body background to purple and choose, chosen a nice set of sans serif fonts. I've set the alignment of the H1 tags to center, color matches the background. All of my headings are going to have the same purple color. This is one that's important to know. For the H2, when I hover over an H2, and again, it's the whole bar, when I hover over the H2, I change my pointer so that you can tell that it's clickable. And that's done through the cursor option. My paragraphs are just set to basic black text, and then I've made some changes to my material icons. I've set the font weight to 700. I've set the color to purple. I've set the font size to one and a half M and I've set the padding to five pixels. To get it to line up correctly, I needed to do a vertical line middle. Then I have the div.close and the div.open where we're going to either not display or display. And I added padding 
here because I wanted it tabbed in. Now I really should do a media query where it's not tabbed in on the phone, but I think it looks significantly better tabbed in here. So that's the basic styling that was applied. Now let's look at the JavaScript. And I did try to document this, and you can go out to PRG147 to see the detail, right click, view source. You can go get the source from there, and I'll also have it on GitHub. So I'm trying to follow the best practices to avoid problems with the JavaScript. I'm using the use strict, strict declaration to make sure that I'm strictly enforcing variable rules. And then I'm declaring my variables. I've got an AAS because it's an Associates of Applied Science document, get element by ID AAS. Then I'm trying to get the H2 elements in there. So I'm getting elements by the tag name H2. And then I've created a variable called H2 node that I want to use here. Now I'm doing a simple loop because this acts like an array. It's not truly an array. You can't use all the array functions on it, but it acts like an array where you can step through it. I'm creating each H2 node and assigning it with an index. So I'm actually, or assigning this index to the H2 node. So when I do an on click, every single H2 will work for the on click and it will send itself to the function as if it's passing in a parameter. So it, what I do that with that is I'm having the h2 variable of this, which means that the current h2 node, whichever one is clicked, everything in here will happen to. So I'm doing an if statement, and it's a simple toggle on, on all these. If it's open, it's going to close. If it's closed, it's going to open. That's the change in the class. So I've got my get attribute class, triple equals open. The triple equals means it's case sensitive. And then I'm using ID attributes to determine which H2 is selected. And then I'm toggling the plus and minus indicators. So here, if the H2 ID was equal to 1, I change the inner HTML to remove. If it's 2, et cetera, I'm changing those to the remove, which is what changes it to the minus sign. That is the word for that material design icon. If the class is currently open, it's going to change to close. And then if the class is currently closed, it will change to open. And then again, by using the ID attributes, if it's currently closed, we're going to switch these to add, which shows the plus sign. Now we actually have to change the sibling node, which is one that's directly followed by the H2. And this is what's opening and closing the panel beneath it. So we're changing those classes to close or open on a simple toggle. So it's not really complex. The hardest, and I spent a couple hours on this program, not because anything was hard with it, but because I was trying to figure out the correct way to change the plus and minus signs. I could have put them as a background image in the class. That was the easier and probably smarter way to do it. But I really wanted to figure out how to change the contents of my material design icon. So I have my document get element by ID. And if you look at the index page here, each of my material icons classes, which comes in as an I for icon, I can change to add, I can change it to remove. There's a whole bunch of icons out there, and I wanted to see if I could change these icons dynamically. And that took a little while to figure out how to do it. There may be a better way to do it, but for me, just tying it to related IDs, where I could do a simple if statement, where it was tied to the ID for the heading. If you look in the heading for each H2 class, the ID would be 3. The associated ID for the material icon would be I3, standing for icon 3. That let me easily relate them so that I'd know whichever one I was working on, whichever one was clicked, I could change the plus and minus. And that took a couple hours to figure that out because I hadn't tried to do that in the DOM before. Pretty much any of the JavaScript is easy if you know how to do it. Figuring out how to do it can sometimes take quite a while. So for your assignment, you're going to do something similar. 
where you're doing expanding and subtracting panels. And since I've already solved some of the logic for you, I would encourage you to try and go through and figure out how to do something that wasn't introduced in this video. Look through the DOM. There's a lot of interesting things that you can do there, and it has some really neat effects because you can take pretty much total control over your HTML and your CSS using JavaScript.